Radio, where we give you a verbal image of life, and we are everyday people. I like to welcome you all to the show. Uh, I like to uh, welcome uh, a, a special listener. Uh, uh, give a shout out and thanks to Sanera Smith for her listenership, and we really do appreciate her. I mean, she she keeps us motivated, and we appreciate uh, her comments and feedback that she um, leaves in regard to uh, whichever show uh, that we do. Uh, Today's title, um, Easter versus Jesus. Um, We're just simply trying to get to the bottom. Did Easter actually exist before the uh, crucifixion of Jesus? And if so, then Jesus actually was fighting against the pagan uh, worships that King Herod and the Romans were participating in. So how did Easter get tied to Jesus? And uh, let me just uh, read you the definition of Easter that they have put out that uh, common people believe. It says that Easter also called Pasha, Greek, Latin, or Resurrection Sunday is a festival and holiday commemorating the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, described in the New Testament as having occurred on the third day after his burial, following his crucifixion by the Romans at Calvary, 30 A.D. Now, we know uh, crucified 6 p.m. on a Friday, and they call it Good Friday, but it was actually a horrific event. And he arose that Sunday morning. Now, uh, wasn't three, four days, but we'll say from Friday, 6 p.m. Then you had all day Saturday. And then Sunday at 6 a.m., he arose. Okay. Well, let's say that. But the point I'm trying to make is, did was Easter already... Uh, a a pagan practice of of worshiping the sun as a deity other than God that Jesus came to condemn, right? And was that one of the reasons why they crucified Jesus? Because he was a teaching a teaching that was contrary to what Rome was teaching. And people were starting to believe in Jesus' teachings. And they were like, well, if he continued to gain more followers, then we'd lose money, i.e. the Romans. Uh, Our economy would be falling. We got to do something and get rid of this Jesus because he's getting in the way of us prospering off the uh, the gullible public, right? So we want to delve into this uh, topic. In this subject, just to give clarification, and you may ask, why are we always going back into history and giving clarification on certain things? Simply because uh, the, i.e., minorities in America, i.e., African Americans, i.e., black, but a title that fits us all globally would be more right. Our mindset is wrapped up into the teachings of the colonizer. That's why we react and we think the way that we do because we are wrapped up in his ideology. And it's, and it's, and it's not beneficial to us because we are not he. So this ties into uh, even our diet. Um, we learned this diet uh, during slavery. And this and, and that diet that we learned during slavery is killing us. And that's why they're adhering to a lot of the uh, black and brown community that's dying from the COVID-19 due to our diet. But we got the diet from the slave masters. That's why all thanks and all praises is due to Master Farah Muhammad talk to Honorable Elijah Muhammad and now Minister Farrakhan is teaching those teachings because he came and broke the diet and said, this is how you eat to live. And those who adhere to that has had success. And those who haven't 
adhere to that. We understand hypertension, uh, heart attacks, high blood pressure, diabetes. I mean, you name it across the board, right? Um, do for self was uh, one of the tenants to get uh, out from up under the colonizer's grip in order for you to survive and adhere something for yourself while you were still alive on, on solid ground. Build for you, your people, your community, your family, you know. So uh, that's the purpose and the reason why we got to get into this because we want to break the spell of what was put up on us by the slave master, you know, because it has not served us. Matter of fact, it's been detrimental to us. We died from eating his food. We died from the knowledge. It wasn't for us. We can never be him. It benefited him and his people, but it was a detriment to uh, black people, i.e. Moors, all over the globe. So let's let's get into uh, Easter versus Jesus because we want to actually see did Easter exist before the crucifixion of Jesus. So let me read something to you all. And this is coming from, it's actually titled Easter or Ishtar by Al Perez, but we're not getting into Easter or Ishtar because it's, it's too many... Uh, it's too many uh, 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 in and ins and outs dealing with that topic. We just want to get in, we, but we're going to read something uh, in regards to that. But we actually just want to get into did Easter exist before the crucifixion of Jesus? So let's roll. The word Easter appears once in the King James Version of the Bible. Herod has put Peter in prison, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. This is in Acts 12, 4. Acts 12, verse 4. Yet in the original Greek text, the word is not Easter, but uh, Pasha. That is Passover. So why was the name changed? Please read on and remember Exodus thirty four fourteen. For you shall worship no other God for the Lord whose name is Jealous. And God is a jealous God. But remember, King Herod, right? Because King Herod, Easter was a pagan holiday, was, a, was worshiping the sun. So if you read in Acts 4, he had Peter in prison. He wasn't going to bring Peter out. Then this is Acts, Acts 12, I mean, Acts 12, verse 4. There weren't, they, and it states in the Bible, they was not going to bring Peter out until after Easter, letting you know in the Bible that Easter had already been a celebration amongst the pagans before uh, Christ was crucified. Ashra, the Greek form of this word from the uh, Septuagint, which is S E P T U A G I N T is Astrid, who is the Babylonian goddess of the sea. Sea being symbolic of people and consort of the god El. She was the mother of several gods, including Baal, the Babylonian god of the sun. These deities were soon adopted by the Canaanites when they, uh, when they, when they named these female deities the Asherah or Ashram. These deities were made of wood carved from a type of evergreen tree, or often they were set up in Canaanite homes as full trees cut down from a forest. The Ashram normally were highly acknowledged during two specific occasions. First and foremost, they were the fertility gods of the spring equinox, and that's what we celebrate, really. And that's what the Easter was about, the spring equinox. But they used Jesus, Constantine, when they was forming this new Christianity, they didn't want to fight all these different tribes and have these different religions. So they just combined them all into one because they felt it was easier to control them 
through their uh through through their belief systems or it was easier to in in incorporate all these different beliefs under one umbrella and we'll put Jesus at the head to calm people down and that way that they can stay in control of the masses right so the spring equinox is what they we celebrate at this particular moment when the days and nights okay we go spring equinox when the days and nights were approximately the same in length, signifying the beginning of living things growing for the summer season. A very common practice in the Canaanite religion was performed on the first Sunday of the equinox. The families would face east to await the rising of the sun, which was the, ch- which, which was the chief symbol of the sun, God, Baal. Later on during the day, the children of the Canaanite parents would often go and hunt for eggs. Any eggs. They would go hunt for eggs, which were symbolic of sex, fertility, and new life. It was believed that these eggs came from rabbits, which in the pagan world were symbolic of lust, sexual prowess, and reproduction. The Canaanites, however were not the only ones who worshipped rabbits as deities. The Egyptians and the Persians, Babylon, also held rabbits in high esteem because they believed that rabbits first came from the divine phoenix birds who once ruled the ancient skies until they were attacked by other gods in a power struggle. When they were uh, struck down, they reincarnated into rabbits, but kept the ability to produce eggs like the ancient birds to show their origins. Other stories concerning the egg rose later in the Middle Ages by the Anglo-Saxons, where they believed the origin of the universe had the earth being hatched out of an enormous egg. Decorating eggs came about to honor their pagan gods and were often presented as gifts to other families to bring them fertility and sexual success during the coming year. And secondly, they were highly worshipped and celebrated during the winter solstice as according to uh, Jeremiah 10, 1 through 5, Isaiah 40, 19 through 20, 41, uh, 7, and 44, 9 through 20. The pagans would go out into the forest and do one of two things. Either they chop down a tree and carve the female deity out of it, or they would simply bring the tree into the house, decorate it with gold and silver ornaments, symbolizing the sun and the moon, while nailing a stand on the bottom so it would not totter or tip over, like you do in Christmas time. They call them uh, that worship in the act of cutting down the tree and digging it with gold and silver to represent the sun and the moon, that was pagan worship. Out of this practice came many other variations of these pagan festivals until the Roman Catholic Church adopted the Asherah worship and named it Easter around 155 A.D. According to the Catholic Encyclopedia, Easter was named after a pagan goddess of the Anglo-Saxon name Estra, E-O-S-T-R-E, the goddess of the dawn. A great controversy arose between the Catholic Church and the Greek Orthodox Church in 325 AD on whether to celebrate Easter on Sundays or on whatever day the Jewish Passover fell upon. Unfortunately, the Greeks lost a lot of followers and the Catholics contended that keeping Easter on Sundays would stimulate the practices of both the Christian world and the pagan worshipers. Note that the word Catholic means universal or one world in thought, concept, and practice. Hence, since the original practice of Ashra worship we now have in our time the celebration of Easter, a counterfeit holiday 
to the true Christian festival of the Passover, which was instituted in the Bible and completed in the New Testament when Christ died on the cross as our Passover lamb. Now, what they're saying is old pagan practices that have been into existence uh, was actually the start of the worship of the sun during the spring equinox. But later on, it became symbolic with the uh, crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But that's why, I, and when you turn on any leading up to Easter, and you turn on any any show and you see any commercials, they highlight the rabbit, the bunny, the egg, the hiding of the egg. You know, all of that is symbolic. All of that is because why? Now, this is me here. This is my belief here. This is this is theory here. I didn't get this from uh, any book. The the part I the part that I was reading to you that came from 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 uh, historical facts. Uh, but this part is is me. That that the the reason why the pagans and I'm talking about back in uh, that old Europe um, pagan worshiping days is because they wanted. They understood that they had to keep, in order for them to exist, they had to keep populating. They had to keep um, making babies to strengthen their race because they, they they weren't the first race on the planet. So they had to keep on uh, having these pagan practices that were Easter because it, it would let them know this fertility time. Hey, we got to get these babies on, you know what I mean, to sustain our population population you know but as time as you see now uh that lasted for a while but after six thousand years now the uh, the population is dwindling is not as strong as it was and now they're trying to find new ways to um keep their uh civilization going so in order to do that um over time they encompass pagan practices with Jesus and put it all together where uh, it would it, it would serve everyone. The pagans would get something out of it, the, and the Christians would get something out of it. The Catholics would get something out of it. The Greek Orthodox Church would get something out of it. Everybody would get something out of it, and we blend it all into one. But one thing they failed to recognize, Jesus stood against all pagan practices he only wanted you to worship his father because his father was one. But the problem was a lot of people weren't going to accept his father. And we get into that at a, at a later date on the reason why. But it was Jesus always pointed to the father, not himself. So all of that is symbolic. But the reason being, again, on why we have these shows is just to shed light to a people who were in bondage by a people and who was taught to eat the wrong foods, who digest the wrong knowledge, who celebrated the wrong holidays, and it's taking a toll on those people as well. They dying out too. You know, so my advice is, and I, you know, hey, you do what you want to do, but my advice is once you become free, it's like it's like it's like put like it's like when you when you get it's like when you get into the county right. Say you go to jail right. Okay, they gonna take away your clothes and everything that you came with. Then they gonna they gonna put on they gonna don you with the orange jumpsuits and orange sandals or whatever and have you uh, walk around right. They gonna have you they gonna have you walk around in this new gear right. But then time you get out. You get out, they give you back uh, the clothes that you had, came in with, you get the stuff back right. You get home, you well, you throw away those clothes and all that was up in there because the, the smell, the, what, what was you throw out, you throw everything away, right? And then you buy things new, and then you become a new person. I mean, you give them back the stuff that they gave you, 
And then you don yourself with something new, clean that represents you. If you get what I'm, if you get what I'm saying, you know. So don't. And so when you, so when we became free as a people, we held on to practices, beliefs, ideologies, dietary laws that wasn't bene- beneficial uh, to us or for us, and we suffered the price. We suffered the consequences of that, and it's time to shed our skin like that snake. Shed that skin and become new. Verbal Peak Radio, we're out.